Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Ataya, an electrophysiologist. Today's topic is supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. This is an abnormal heart rhythm or an arrhythmia. It's pretty common, uh, so some of you may have it, and, and we'll talk about what it is. I want to give a little bit of background on what SVT is and talk about the treatment options. In order to do so, we have to describe a little bit of background about the electrical system of the heart. So we'll get into it. The heart is a muscle, and just like any muscle in the body, it requires electricity to contract. So if you want to squeeze your arm or your leg, your brain sends electricity down a nerve, it hits the muscle, and then it squeezes. The same process occurs inside the heart, but it's automatic. So let's describe it. The heart, uh, as you probably know, has four different chambers, two on the top, two on the bottom, two on the right, and two on, uh, on the left. It has a right atrium, a left atrium, a right ventricle, and a left ventricle. The, it is separated by uh, valves, and the way that it typically works is that uh, the sinus node, or the pacemaker of the heart, generates electricity. That electricity courses through the top chambers of the heart, the atria, and then pauses at the AV node, and then it, electricity then continues to the bottom to the ventricles. So electricity comes from the top and to the bottom. Our pacemaker, or our sinus node, is in tune with our needs. So if we're relaxing, it goes nice and slow. If we're running, it'll accelerate and go faster. And most of the time, we're unaware of our uh, heart uh, beat because it's appropriate to the situation. Now, people can have abnormal heart rhythms for, for, uh, because of uh, electrical abnormalities anywhere within the heart. Arrhythmias that occur in the bottom chambers, in the ventricles, are referred to as ventricular tachycardia or ventricular arrhythmias. Those can be very dangerous. Those can be life-threatening. Everything else is referred to as a supraventricular tachycardia. So if it comes from the top chamber or from the AV node, that is referred to as supraventricular tachycardia or SVT. So before we go further, just to clarify, SVT versus VT. SVT is not a lethal heart rhythm. Ventricular tachycardia often is. Supraventricular tachycardia typically occurs in normal, healthy hearts, whereas ventricular tachycardia more often occurs in diseased hearts. You do not need a defibrillator because it's not a dangerous heart rhythm in SVT, but in VT you do. So uh, that frames the conversation. So even though SVT is not a fatal uh, arrhythmia, it can still cause symptoms. And, and the most common symptom is that of palpitations, a sensation that the heart is not beating normally. Typically, the heart beats fast, and it uh, beats fast without, uh, without reason. People can also get a pounding in their neck, and the duration of symptoms depends on how long you're in this rhythm. Sometimes people can have this that lasts just a few seconds, sometimes minutes, or more typically with SVT, it can occur for hours. It's important to know that the symptoms of SVT or palpitations can overlap with other things. So typically, in order to make a diagnosis, we need either an EKG, if we can capture it while you're in it, or some other form of monitoring, such as a Holter monitor or even an Apple Watch or something like that. Once you've been diagnosed with SVT, you should be reassured you're not going to die from this, um, but it can still be distressing to have your heart race. We have treatment options as well as a cure for it, however. The treatment options that we often start with is what's referred to as vagal maneuvers. When you find yourself going into this fast heart rate, we typically teach people to do what's called a vagal maneuver. And typically what that does is we ask people to take a deep breath and then to bear down, bear down. And often what that does is it uh, it, it puts a tone onto the heart. Your brain sends uh, a signal to the heart that tells it to tone itself down, and that can often break the rhythm. So we tell people take a deep breath and then bear down. Sometimes that can help. Similar uh, uh, results can occur if you breathe through a straw for similar reasons. And some people say, actually, if you lay down and lift your legs above over your head, that you can uh, break these arrhythmias. Sometimes it works, sometimes it works for a while, and then sometimes it, it doesn't work. So for the next step that we sometimes recommend is, is medications. Now medications can have side effects and medications are not perfectly um, uh, effective. 
the oral medications can tone down this and can decrease episodes, but they don't work all the time. There's a medicine that we can give intravenously in, in every ER and, and probably every uh, uh, ambulance, um, but it does require an, I, an IV. That's a medicine called adenosine. So if a vagal maneuver doesn't work, and if you don't have medications, you can always come into the ER. This can be a hassle because people can keep going into th this arrhythmia, and oftentimes people don't want to be on medications for the rest of their lives. So fortunately, we have a procedure that can cure, uh, not just treat, but cure these arrhythmias, and that's referred to as, as an ablation. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Ablation is a procedure where we use what's called a catheter or something plastic that allows us to go into the vein, into the heart, and deliver radio frequency to burn and kill the tissue that's responsible for these abnormal heart rhythms. Where we burn within the heart is dependent on which arrhythmia there it is. So we talked about SVT in general, but there's actually three different kinds that we see commonly in, in adults. There's AVNRT, AVRT, and atrial tachycardia. The target for the ablation and the type of procedure that we do depends on what we diagnose. So let's talk about each mechanism uh, uh, separately. So for, uh, as, as we mentioned with uh, the normal heart uh, uh, system, electricity comes from the top, hits the atrium, and then goes to the AV node, and then it goes down to the bottom to the ventricles. If we zoom in though uh, onto the, the, the AV node, what we find is that there can be two pathways into uh, the AV node. There's two areas or channels that allow electricity to come from the atrium to the AV node. There is what's referred to as a slow pathway, an area of slow conduction, and a fast pathway, an area of fast conduction. What can happen is if you get a beat that's appropriately timed is that it can go down the slow pathway and then back up the fast pathway. And what you end up forming is a short circuit. So the heart will go on and on and on quickly without reason. And it'll often just continue like that for minutes, if not hours, until you can either break it with a vagal maneuver or with the medicine such as adenosine. In order to prevent this from happening again, what we offer is, is an ablation. So we actually enter the heart through the vein and we put the catheter into this area. We put the catheter right at the slow pathway and we deliver radio frequency burn so that conduction cannot occur down the slow pathway anymore. So the next time the heart electricity wants to go down the slow pathway, it can't. And without two limbs, you can't get a short circuit and conduction can only go down uh, the normal pathway. So this is a highly effective procedure. The biggest danger to this is that we are right in the neighborhood of the AV node and the normal conduction system. So the danger to this procedure is small, but it is a, it is a known risk that you can injure the normal conduction system. The risk of needing a pacemaker because of an injury to that is uh, well less than 1%. Uh, I usually quote people about 0.5% risk. In reality, it's, it's even lower than that. Uh, but the success rates are quite high. It's about 95% uh, effective. Uh, so that's the most common uh, form of SVT that's referred to as AVNRT. Uh, a name that is uh, similar to that, different than AVNRT, is something called AVRT or a pathway. And the way that the heart works is that there's supposed to be only one pathway down to the bottom through the AV node. People who have AVRT have an area of tissue that can conduct from the top to the bottom. That's something referred to as an accessory pathway. And, and, and that can set up a, a short circuit in similar fashion. Electricity can come down the normal way and then back up that accessory pathway. Less commonly, it can also go down the accessory pathway and then back up. But you can see how you can form a short circuit. The target for ablation for this, of course, is the abnormal tissue, the, the uh, accessory pathway. Most of these occur on the left side of the heart. So what we end up doing is we put a catheter into the heart. We poke with a needle to go to the left side of the heart. We put the catheter right over abnormal tissue, and then we deliver radiofrequency energy. The radiofrequency energy kills those cells so that it can no longer conduct. So that the next time electricity wants to go back up that area, it cannot. And since you don't have uh, two limbs of a short circuit, you can't form that short circuit 
And this has a very high success rate, also around 95%. The least common uh, SVT is something called atrial tachycardia. And that is uh, s similar uh, uh, to, to, to these other SVTs uh, because it is not dangerous, but it's different because it is not a short circuit. So as we mentioned, the, the area that generates our, our heart rate is called the sinus node. That's the pacemaker of the heart. You can have other areas within the heart, however, that generate abnormal electricity. And those are referred to as atrial tachycardia. And so as you might imagine, uh, that area can beat very quickly and it can beat without reason. So whereas a sinus node knows to, 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 to beat appropriate to the situation because it's innervated by our brain, these areas will just fire on their own. And so people can get palpitations uh, and have their heart rates without reason. The ablation procedure, as you might imagine, is, is pretty straightforward. We have to put the catheter up into the heart and we map out exactly where this comes from. We want to get as close as possible as we can. And then with the ablation catheter, we deliver another radiofrequency lesion to kill those cells that are firing abnormally. Success rates are pretty high. The one caveat with atrial tachycardia is that you have to have a good amount of it in order for us to map it. The other ones are more anatomical uh, uh, ablations. We can map it without you having a lot of uh, SVT, but atrial tachycardia, sometimes it can come and go. And so you have to have a decent amount of it for us to be able to map it and ultimately kill it. So that's the ablation procedure. Um, it, it is a typically outpatient or one night admission. Um, it, you're, usually not completely asleep for this procedure. We get you sedated. Success rates are typically about 95%. Because we go into the vein, you have to take it easy on the groin in, 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 in the leg, so no heavy lifting for about a week or so. The risk depends on, on, on what we're ablating and, and where we're, we're ablating, but success rates are quite high. This is one of the few curable things in medicine. As, as I say, you can't cure diabetes, you can't cure hypertension, you can treat them, but this SVT, because it's focal and because the, the, the treatments are definitive, is curable. And you can free yourself from medications for the rest of your life. So I hope this helps. I hope this gives a little bit of background on SVT and what ablation is. And, and I hope it uh, gives you a sense of what your options are. If you need anything, give us a call and we'll see you next time.